Hey everyone, today we'll be taking a look at the Deluxe Router Guide from Bosch. It is the RA1054 and uh, it's both a combination uh, edge guide as well as circle cutting jig to help you cut circles up to 32 inches in diameter. We'll be putting it through its paces uh, in this video and we'll be testing it out on our Bosch 1617 EBSPK router system, which includes both the fixed base and the plunge base. It, the rods do mount slightly differently depending on the base that you're using, but it is compatible with both. We will um, really just be taking a look at a number of the features of it, the accessories that are included, go through the build quality, and uh, also test it on, on a few different cuts. So um, it retails for $70 Canadian, $40 US. I think I paid around $50 Canadian, so you can get it on sale fairly often. And uh, let's take a look. All right, so let's take a look at the edge guide itself, and I'll continue to call it an edge guide, even though they do try to call it a rotor guide because it also does circles. But uh, anyway, so quite the large unit, as I had already mentioned, and let's just pull out a measuring tape and see exactly how big it is. So in its default state, so just over 11 inches wide, and I think about just over 16 inches long. And uh, these faces actually can expand out for larger pieces of work, according to the manual. And the majority of it is aluminum. So really nice aluminum piece here, down here. Uh, pretty high quality springs to allow for the fine adjustment mechanism to work. Even the, the thumb screws themselves, like plastic on the top, but then pretty solid throughout. The rods are very well built, uh, some sort of metal. And uh, the plastic itself to run along the edge is actually very nice. So it's a pretty decent quality plastic and also one that will continue to move along your work pieces uh, quite smoothly. So in general, like, I'm pretty impressed with the build quality given the price and uh, the fine adjust is working pretty well right out of the box. Uh, so from what I had read, you need to make sure that these knobs are loose and these ones are tight, which then this will rotate and move this up. So it's uh, 1 16th for just over 1 16th for a full rotation. I mean, you kind of zero it out and, and narrow it in as you need to, but uh, pretty nice overall. And um, it comes out of the box like this, so there's not much assembly. So the only accessories that come with it actually are, so of course your manual, which super basic, but sufficient for this. Then I haven't even opened these. Okay. Okay, so now we have it open and we have our dust extractor hood. So this mounts to the bottom down here. And I'll be going through this mounting in just a moment. It does require you to remove a couple of screws. And then it does come with the dust port for your vacuum. And uh, it's definitely small for my shop vac. It'd probably fit a dust extractor really well. But luckily I actually have this old beat up accessory that I use with my pocket hole jigs and uh, it connects really well. So then the rigid shop vac will connect to that. So we'll be giving the dust collection a shot. Although I'm using a regular shop vac from rigid and not a formal dust extractor. So it comes with those accessories as well as this little circle cutting piece. And uh, this was, this is a, an interesting one where they actually say in the manual that you put this in the, in the middle of the circle that you want to cut and you tape it down. So whereas a lot of circle cutting jigs require you to either drill a hole or put a pin in, which can mark your work piece. So I'm, I'm, I'm happy that it doesn't mark the work piece, but it's also, oh, I don't know what the alternatives would be. It's kind of silly to think that you'd just be taping it down. Although, you know what, as far as the alternative, I kind of like it. So we'll be giving that a shot. It would be nice if it actually gave two options, like a pin here that could kind of flip up or down that could actually just kind of stick in itself if you weren't too worried about marring the piece but anyways decent little thing there and then it comes with a couple of wing nuts uh, for attaching to the rotor bases and a couple of thumb screws as well so depending on the base that you use use a different type of um, mounting mechanism so i think on the fixed base you use the thumb screws which are all metal really nice feeling thumb screws and then on the plunge base you use the wings um, that's my understanding, at least from taking a look at the manual. So let's take a look at how to get the dust hood on. And uh, yeah, let's take a look. Okay, so taking a look at the dust collection uh, hood or the dust extraction hood. And I'll just be using this with a shop vac. But um, 
it slides on really nicely on the back here and part of me wants to just leave it like that because it's pretty firm although once you get the vacuum suction and the vibration of the router i'm sure it will shake loose so there is a way and the recommended approach to mounting it in here by putting um changing the way that these bolts are aligned and putting a nut on the back so i'm going to show you how to do that and just taking a quick peek at the instruction book before we need to essentially remove both of these. I'm only gonna be removing one side because I want to uh, make it easier to transition over to use a circle jig as well. But one should give me enough mounting pressure. And if not, then, then I'll definitely do both. But let's undo these screws and take off this piece right here. Okay, so not the most enjoyable experience, but um, we've got it off and we really only need to take the one out for now. And just to show you on the back, so yeah, we'll be mounting this in like that. And part of me wants to just get two more of these um, hex nuts, just the right size, so I can just like put them in back there and just kind of leave it permanently in there. But anyways, um, we'll now flip it back over. And I think that this is the best way to do it. Because these kind of slide in and it's a little finicky. Um, so let's get this guy in first and tighten down a bit. Okay, and then now what we need to do is we need to feed this guy through, but we also need to put this hex nut on the back in here. So it fits in pretty well. Just gonna hold it there with the one finger. These are all Torx, by the way, which the more I run into Torx, the more I love it. Uh, although here in Canada, most of the time we get Robertson, which is also great, but um, I definitely do prefer Torx. All right, there we go. So we've got, uh, got the dust hood mounted. Let's just tighten up all these guys. Which is good. Okay, so we've got it in there, and again, I only have it mounted with one right now, but that's super firm. So if you are going to be transitioning between using this to cut circles, um, which actually I don't think you need to remove this to cut circles. It's mostly, hmm, no, that's a good point. I think that I may actually permanently mount the other one uh, for dust collection because the circle jig actually only uses this piece right here. So. Anyways, we got it mounted right now, and uh, now let's take a look at how we mount this to our routers. All right, so first let's take a look at the fixed base here, and uh, this is really quite easy to slide in. If we just take the rods, and they simply slide in like that, and you can already see it start to register against the edge of the workbench here. And then on the back of the router base, just to show you on video, it has these um, two very easy to access holes for the mounting mechanism. So let's slide it in, take these really nice thumb screws. And put them in. And you're good to go. So um, I'm going to show you the other rotor base. I'm not going to put the other one in right now. But you can see that it's, it's mounted pretty well. It holds very strongly. There is kind of a, a nice bit of a gap between the router and the edge guide itself. Uh, not too much, maybe a millimeter sixteenth of an inch or so. But that uh, does help to give a little bit of room when it comes to moving it along. And yeah, very happy with how that mounts overall. So let's take a look at the plunge base. Okay, so the plunge base is a little different and you'll see at the front of the plunge base it actually, you see that the rods are mounted perpendicular to that. So they actually come in this way. And you do want to make sure that you are aware of the rotation. And it does mount slightly differently than on the fixed base where the screws, the hole for the screws are actually at the front. So if you are going to be routing an edge, it does go in like this. There we go, and 
Then we can take our wing nuts and throw those into these holes. And the nice thing is once you do get it to the point where it's pretty close to where you want, you can then use the fine adjust mechanism to really dial it in. And you have a, a lot of flexibility here. So let's just take a look at this. So there we have it about as loose as it could be. And let's grab a tape measure and actually check to see how. So I'm gonna basically be measuring the gap between those unit or those pieces. So we've got one and three quarters of an inch. So let's move this in. And yeah, very easy to do. Okay, there we go. And here we have about three quarters of an inch. So it looks like there's about an inch of fine adjustment room. So as long as you get your router base to the edge guide mounted within an inch of where you want to be, uh, you can easily fine adjust. So just make make note of where you have the fine adjust set. So if you have it either on its loosest setting, like I do here, or on its tightest, just make note of that. So let's take this base off and we'll mount the fixed base and we'll actually do a test cut with it just to see how it works and how the dust collection using the rigid chop pack works. Okay, so we now have it fully mounted to the fixed base here and we have a half inch um, straight bit in there. And we're going to just be routing a very simple um, just edge treatment on this piece of MDF. It's, it's the best piece of scrap that I have around right now. And I'll be showing you a little bit of the fine adjust in just a moment, but you can see the mangled dust collection series here. So we have the hood itself, and then we also have um, the dust port, and then I have my adapter to connect to my rigid shop vac. And just to show you how the fine adjust works, so hopefully you can see the the rotor bit in there. And if I screw this in, it will tighten it up a little bit. So it works really well. Um, pretty happy with it. Sometimes it does jump a little bit, so it's not necessarily perfect. And uh, also if you don't have these thumb screws fully tightened, it will slide extremely easily. So um, definitely make sure that you have it set right and then when you get it to the right point that you make sure all four of these thumb screws are fully tightened all right to show just a little bit more i'm going to do a fine adjust into exactly the position that i want loosen loosen dial that in and then tighten it down and you'll see that the jig or sorry the the edge guide itself kind of raised up when I tightened it. So I'm not exactly sure why. Well, let's, yeah. So it is kind of interesting. I'm sure that's showing up on video there, but as I tighten this up, it almost like it stiffens up the entire unit. So then you'd wanna just make sure that you double check where you have the bit and uh, make sure the rest is all tight and, and I'm good to go. So um, I'm gonna back it up and lower down the bit a little bit. We'll do a quick run across and uh, see how it goes. So let's lower that bit just a little bit using the fine adjust knob on the 16-17. With it being an MDF, it's gonna be very dusty, so I'm gonna go make sure I get my safety equipment. Confirmation of safety for YouTube. Okay, so let's take a look at the edge and you'll see, and don't touch the router bit and uh, the MDF, it's not perfect. 
Um, but pretty nice. I was very happy with how this plastic ran alongside the MDF. Uh, it's not it's not so slippery that you'd be concerned, but it's definitely um, pretty nice level of appropriate level of friction for running across it. And yeah, genuinely pretty happy with that. It didn't vibrate much. The dust collection for MDF, given this very simple port, and it's I know that the the bit itself was kind of like just underneath there um but i do have the red run plugged right now by the way so i'm not pointing my finger at the the bit with it plugged in and but with the dust falling down into this i was very impressed with how it got sucked up there's not much dust around in the air right now so generally generally pretty happy with the dust collection on this now if you're writing or routing a dado in the middle of this your dust collection would be quite poor. Uh, you'd probably then want to switch to the dust collection mechanism that uh, actually goes onto the router itself. So, um, but as far as doing an edge with this, I'm pretty happy. So let's take this apart and uh, take a look at how circles are done. Okay, so now to adapt this in order to use the circle cutting jig, we essentially need to remove the rods and this piece back here. So we can start by removing I'm going to loosen these my nuts and remove these two. And if we take this rod out, whoop, we'll have to find that. <laughs> Beware of springs. Probably a good thing that I still have my safety glasses on. Let's release the tension on this. There. So this is actually the better way to do it. You don't lose uh, springs. So then you actually rotate this around so that it gives you a little bit of an extra amount of room. And let's take this rod out. And by doing so, it essentially mounts on the top of this. And is that all it is? Interesting. Okay, so we'll, we'll be taking a look at that in more detail, but uh, for now, let's get these rods in. Just tighten it down for fun. Let's grab our router. Again, this is not plugged in, so don't worry about that. And this, I believe, actually mounts from this way. So you can get a little bit more room by if you want to just like mount these just at the back. Because it's a circle, it doesn't matter if it's off kilter a little bit, it'll cut a really nice circle. Um, so let's get this in. We're gonna do, hmm, I'm trying to think of what space we have. I'm gonna just do a little bit of an arc and uh, just to illustrate how these go in. So. These thumb screws gonna lock in here. Definitely questioning this a little bit, um, but we will see. Again, you want to tighten those down, and you do lose the fine adjust on this, so. It's a little finicky with, with getting this probably dialed in perfectly, although you can probably actually center it really well by just looking over top of this circle. And um, so that, that's it. That's, I feel like this needs to push on. Interesting. Okay, I feel like it might just be, there we go. Okay, so now it makes sense. It was just a little stiff to get in, so it looks like there's just a little bit of the powder coating on the aluminum that needed to, to go. So you, you basically mount that down, and then this swings perfectly. So let's do that. So let's get this mounted to the MDF. We'll cut a bit of a curve and uh, see how it goes. Okay, so one thing I do want to note is just how tight of a fit this is in here. And that would be on purpose because the, you do want it to be super tight so that there's not much slop. But just testing this just uh, as I move the router over, you probably want to spin it around and get it just kind of 
fit perfectly before you actually use it. It is a very tight fit, which uh, should give it a nice arc. But um, what we're going to do essentially is we're going to mount this there and then we're going to cut our arc. And given that this is a scrap piece of MDF, I'm not too worried about marking it up. So I'm going to use duct tape on this. Let's get some bigger pieces on here. Wouldn't normally use duct tape. You don't necessarily want to use painter's tape, although you're not putting a ton of pressure on it. So I don't think you need to overthink it too much. Um, but there we go, that should hold in place really well. Then what we'll be doing is we'll be sliding this on top and lowering the bit over on one side. And then we'll be cutting an arc all the way across. So again, safety gear, just a moment. Confirmation for YouTube. Okay, so we swept it out and uh, generally that's a pretty nice arc. So not sure what uh, diameter or radius I set this to. It was just kind of a random setting to try it out and just using that half inch straight bit, but very stable. Um, the pin itself held really well with the tape. So I'll have to review the video to see if there was much give. If anything, t maybe a tiny, tiny bit and I would just probably tape it down a little more next time. Um, the actual, jig itself held up pretty well the guide um it's not as good necessarily as the again the rotors uh, unplugged but um it's not necessarily as good as a miles craft circle jig that i had a few years ago um but to have this built into the edge guide that i got for this router system is fantastic and i no longer have that circle jig so this is something that I'll definitely be using going forward. And yeah, I'm genuinely pretty happy with it. Let's take a look at uh, how far it extends though. Okay, so if we wanted to, we could loosen this up and we could pull this back. Essentially, it's right there. The MDF with no dust collection there was very dusty. So I would make sure next time that I have the router based dust collection attached um, just to make sure that it collects as much dust, especially when dealing with MDF. So in this case, um, we have a overall diameter. If we go right, right back to the bit, um, about 15 inches and we could probably extend this back bit a little bit. So I don't doubt that you can probably get the 32 inch diameter that they mentioned. A 32 inch in diameter is not huge. So you're not gonna be cutting like medium sized coffee tables that are circles with this. Um, it does have really good stability at this 16 inch setting though. So I am pretty impressed with that. Again, I, I wish that this mounted slightly differently or gave options. I actually might look for a uh, another centering tool or take this pin out and see if there's another way for me to do this. I'm not usually too worried about harming the board a little bit. It's just like plugging a, uh, uh, a, a nail hole from a brad nail. So it does have a lot of stability. That's one thing that I would say about this is that the two rods and this nice aluminum fixture connecting them and the way it mounts to the router is quite nice. So yeah, if you are doing circles up to 32 inches and you don't need any more, this is pretty solid, um, far better than I expected. So I'd say the edge guide itself, and I'll give a bit of an overview in a few minutes, but the edge guide itself is pretty good and pretty close to what I would have expected. 
The actual circle cutting jig though is much more impressive than I expected. So again, other than how this mounts, like you can just kind of see it wobbling, but as long as you're maintaining that center point, I think I just need to hold it down a little more and maybe some double-sided tape underneath would have actually been a better idea. But um, let's clean this up and I'll give you my final thoughts. All right, so here are my final thoughts. So um, I paid just under $50 Canadian for this router guide and I'm happy. Um, I know it probably doesn't measure up to the quality of the Festool. Uh, it's probably on par with the Porter Cable one that I have some experience with with a DeWalt router before. Um, probably not quite the build quality of the Porter Cable, but overall very stable. I think especially with these two rods when they're mounted. And one thing I didn't mention is that you can actually use narrower rods on the smaller Bosch router, so more of the Palm router. So you can actually use this massive guide on some small routers as well again in the description below i'll have a link to the official product page which has the compatibility um other thing that i didn't mention is that these plastic guides can actually move either in if you really want to seal this off and have a bit of a, a tight um tight gap for um some of your routing if you're routing dados or something along those lines but they can also expand out a little bit so in this case probably Probably another centimeter or so. So if you have a really large workpiece, you can get even more stability on them. Um, yeah, overall, I'm happy. I mean, for as far as a review goes, I'm very happy with this router edge guide for this router. I have been exploring the M Power, uh, or before buying this one, I was exploring the M Power router guide, which looks like it's just a phenomenal unit, but not in stock many places in Canada. And when you add on some of the accessories, you end up at two to three times the price of the Bosch RA1054. So um, yeah, for me, the, the edge guide itself probably meets expectations. I think the build quality is pretty good. Um, the fine adjust works well, but it does kind of jump here and there if you don't have everything bolted down evenly. Um, the circle cutting was actually better than I expected. So I'm not the biggest fan of how this mounts, although I was mounting it to MDF with duct tape, which isn't ideal since MDF can get pretty dusty. Um, I do wish that it gave the option to mount it with tape uh, or provided a pin of some sort so you could screw it into the, the material itself. Patching those holes isn't too bad and those of us that do cut circles um, are, are fairly used to, to doing that with circle jigs. So um, the circle jig though, limited by 32 inches in diameter, which is fine. I, I don't think I'm gonna run into that too often, although I have occasionally done like a four foot diameter table. So, um, but I think that you'd run into any issue with, with uh, a circle jig at that point and you, you need to use other things. Um, but yeah, the circle jig, very stable with these two pieces mounted to the router. And I know you don't necessarily need to if you're doing a circle, as long as everything stays firm you're good as even with, with one mounting point. However, these two made it really easy. I think it'd be a little clunky to do really tight radius circles, but if you're doing anything kind of from a foot in diameter again to that 32 inches, like you get right up to the 32 inches without issues. So yeah, again, I, I guess to summarize, um, the edge guide kind of meets my expectations. I think when you factor in the price, especially the sale price, it's very good. Um, the circle cutting, exceeds my expectations, I think with the dual mounting points. And yeah, overall, if you're in the Bosch router system, and again, check the link below for compatibility, but I highly recommend the 1054. Um, it's an accessory that I'm looking forward to using more. And uh, let me know what you think in the comments. And uh, yeah, tell me if you have experience with the 1054, with the edge guides from other brands, Festool, Porter Cable, um, DeWalt, I know the, the DeWalt one's not the most well-loved, um, or the Empower one specifically. I'm definitely curious as, as to what you've experienced with that. So anyway, there's my review and a uh, pretty in-depth uh, overview of what this uh, router guide can do. So thanks for watching.